There's a big question on my mind, and I hope you guys can help me answer it at the end of this video. There's one thing that can cause big issues for mobile devices, and that is shooting in low light conditions. Because physics have only evolved so far, there's only a certain amount of light that a sensor can take in, even when you have a huge 1 inch sensor like on the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. Welcome back to our annual night camera comparison featuring the Huawei P60 Pro, iPhone 14 Pro, Xiaomi 13 Ultra, and the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra. Let the facts speak. Now, before you start asking, where is the Pixel 7 Pro? Where is the Vivo X90 Pro Plus with its 1 inch sensor? Tell me! The answer is in the next video. Since the new Pixel will come out in only 4 months, we're saving some phones for another comparison coming soon, so please bear with us. We're going to be looking at photos taken both with the night mode turned on and off as we want this to be an overall comparison of hardware and software. The first image is a very tricky one and highlights something that I often say in our videos, which is that technology is progressing at a rapid pace. Just a couple of years ago, there would be no way that you could achieve this quality at night, but here we are. I advise you to turn off the lights and also watch this video on a big screen if you can because then you can see the increased noise in the sky of the Galaxy and the iPhone compared to the other two phones. Not only this, but the iPhone has slightly lesser detail on the right side of the ground and also along with the Galaxy on the building on the left side in the background. This represents the more advanced and larger sensor of the Xiaomi 13 Ultra that absorbs more light as it is bigger as well as the variable aperture on the Huawei P60 Pro which can go all the way down to 1.4, meaning that the opening can become very large, allowing more light to come in. In the second image, the results are not too different. For one, the noise is persisting. Another issue is that the photos of Apple and Samsung are artificially sharpened, meaning that their software tried to compensate for the lack of light. The S23 Ultra's photo does look slightly better than the iPhones this time around, so this will be reflected in the points. The last image with the night mode turned off gave us some very interesting results that I would like to go over with you. First of all, let's crop into the person standing below the tree, who just happens to be me. The detail on the Huawei P60 Pro is immense. It's actually unbelievable how in conditions like these, a phone is still capable of preserving detail like this. Naturally, the details of the tree are also better preserved on Huawei's side. My only criticism would be that the photo is a bit too bright for nighttime, but I remain very impressed with the results. As usual, Xiaomi's flagship has more detail in the grass as well as the tree, with the iPhone and Galaxy following closely behind with overall nice photos if you don't pixel peep too much. Now it's time to turn on the night mode with photos taken in even darker conditions. These photos actually look beautiful, and since the subject is very visible and close to the camera, there seems to be no serious problems with any of them, which will lead us to focus on the specifics like photographers would. The Huawei P60 Pro definitely has higher contrast, with the Xiaomi 13 Ultra having the least. The S23 Ultra has the most noise out of them all, and while it's not obvious from afar, it is important to take into consideration. The P60 Pro does look to have some noise reduction software chugging in the background, which does look quite effective. In the end, while I really like the finished, edited look of the P60 Pro, after a little pixel peeping, I must admit that the Xiaomi 13 Ultra has more positives and defined details. The iPhone has also done a better job than the Galaxy once again, especially in terms of noise reduction, which was actually the other way around in our last year's comparison, showing how software updates can affect performance. In the next image, it's obvious from the get-go that the iPhone performed the worst. The shadows are completely crushed and there's very little detail in the background. Once again, I'd like to crop into myself and show you the insane detail that the P60 Pro has. This is not only true for myself, but also for the trees and the statue in the background with very impressive noise reduction. However, I will not praise it to the extent that I did like in one of the previous photos that I was standing under a tree. You see, even though Huawei's flagship has immeasurable detail compared to the rest, you never want a night photo to be this bright, so there is one thing that they could improve. That being said, this kind of detail at night is some never seen before stuff, so I can't fault them that much, especially since you can edit the photo of the P60 Pro to make it a little darker while maintaining that insane detail. Looking at the photos in a general way from far away, I'd probably take the Xiaomi 13 Ultra's photo for social media, while the Galaxy does look better than the iPhone in this one. Lastly, here is a photo of the Holocaust Memorial in Berlin. 
Here we see three different white balance profiles with the classic iPhone yellow, the Xiaomi red and Huawei along with Samsung being a little pink. This was a very dark environment so it's no surprise that the software had to make do with what we gave it but it's also no surprise that the P60 Pro has the most amount of detail once again. The S23 Ultra overtakes the 13 Ultra this time purely because of the general outlook of the photo with the iPhone coming in last. Well this is actually crazy but the Huawei P60 Pro takes the best photos at night. After seeing the Xiaomi 12s Ultra outperform everything last year due to the huge Sony IMX989 sensor, I was expecting the 13 Ultra to have an even easier time, but Huawei said no. I have the best software for this, as well as the best variable aperture, which is more advanced than the one on the Xiaomi flagship. How do they perform in ultra wide though? Let's go over some photos with the same structure. Starting off, Xiaomi definitely has the most accurate white balance, while Huawei has the most amount of detail, which is most of the time more important. Samsung and Apple will take two each with photos that aren't bad, but aren't great either. The second image is a fancier angle of a photo that might be familiar to you. Towards the top of the building, there's a decent amount of noise on every phone, but unsurprisingly, the P60 Pro has controlled it the best. However, the photo is overall too warm, with the subject of the photo looking very nice on the side of the Xiaomi phone, who also happens to control the noise on the building better than the Samsung phone. With night mode turned on, it seems Xiaomi is the only one keeping things real and ultra wide. I like how the light is dimmed down and the shadows are left as they are, which results in quite a nice photo that is detailed and natural at the same time. Surprisingly, I'm going to go with the iPhone for second place as the white balance is more on point than the remaining two. The last photo is one where the P60 Pro took 19 seconds to absorb as much light as it could. Yeah, you heard me right. 19 full seconds of waiting to take a photo. Not only is that insanely cool, it's the only reason we're able to see through the passage rather than a jumble of noise like on the iPhone. Huawei is definitely trying some crazy stuff like this and I kinda like it. Well done to them and Xiaomi here and let's check out some portrait shots. As you probably imagine, portrait software doesn't really work the best when there's little light but we wanted to give it a try anyway. What was surprising to see though was that the software worked even worse than we expected on Apple and Samsung's side as their sensors were not able to fully comprehend the distance between the cameras and eye due to the lack of light. The background blur looks pretty neat on the P60 Pro as a 13 Ultra S close by. Getting a little closer helped out the iPhone and the Galaxy, but it also improved the quality of the Chinese giants. I really like the photo by Xiaomi's flagship here as it looks very natural compared to the P60 Pro who will be tied up with the Galaxy as the former is too bright while the latter is too dark. As for the iPhone, sorry guys but the 13 Pro Max we had last year definitely performed better. The reason for this is because Apple used very similar hardware for years but upgraded to a completely different setup for the 14 Pro series which is a reason for quite a few inconsistencies. The next photo is a really close one between Huawei, Samsung and Apple. Apple. My face looks great on the 13 Ultra, but the blur is very strong. The S23 Ultra and the 14 Pro are quite close to each other in terms of traits, if only they could squeeze in a bit more light to remove the noise from my face. Huawei is only slightly behind as the focus is not completely on point, giving them 2 points. My choice for the last image is once again going to be the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. Much better blur than the others as well as a more natural outlook. The P60 Pro has some blur errors around my body and the background while the Galaxy is very noisy around my face. The iPhone seems to be even noisier, almost pixelated, giving it last place. Well, I wouldn't say that that was super climactic, but congratulations to Xiaomi for making it count. They've improved their portrait mode software a lot and I very clearly remember that in the previous years, it was actually mediocre. As for Samsung and Apple, they really have to step up with their new flagships because Chinese phones have started to outperform them hard in the camera category, which was an impossible feat in the past. Now it's time for the biggest hurdle, the most difficult challenge. Not only will we shoot videos at night, the Chinese have to make a last stand against Apple and their advanced videography software. In the first one, we wanted to show you a general scene from far away to experience how small details look. While I'm not a huge fan of the white balance of the P60 Pro, check out how detailed everything is even though the sky is pitch black. Regardless, I'd say that the iPhone and the 13 Ultra are up there as well with more accurate white balance and good detail, with the S23 Ultra having a slight blur which will be more obvious in the next video. So we were basically mind blown back at the office. Sure, it does look a little bit artificial. Sure, the iPhone looks more natural. 
but how in the world do they get this much detail when there's barely any light? I mean, everything is visible with literally zero blur. What have you done, Huawei? The iPhone is still better than the other two here as Xiaomi has better details than Samsung but loses out due to skin tone. Now let's make it even harder with larger resolutions while shooting horizontally. The P60 Pro is doing well as usual, minimal blur and noise even in this dark alley. I kinda like how the software brightens the scene to make me more visible but of course this is a double edged sword as it is also the culprit of the increased noise. I also like how the ground that I'm walking on has retained some fine detail which you can see is not there on the iPhone which was a number one video phone for preserving details. Still, there isn't anyone that can say that the iPhone is doing a worse job, as it's arguably better if you prefer the scene to look a little dim and natural as it's footage taken at night. For me, I'd say that they're around the same level. Xiaomi though has some major issues. Even though the quality and detail is the best, and you can focus on the building and the ground on the left side to see that, the software screws up everything when there's movement. Look at how fuzzy my face gets when I move around and that is just disappointing. What's even more disappointing is the S23 Ultra though. Definitely need some adjustments in the S24 series, otherwise Samsung is really poised to be left behind China in the camera phone sector. The last video will be a hilarious one as we took just one ultra wide for you. Huawei looks horrendous. I feel ultra wide cameras won't be amazing at taking videos at night anytime soon as the main focus is always on the main camera doing product research so let's just move on to Apple which surprisingly is pretty good, at least compared to Huawei. Sure there is some noise but the visibility is pretty impressive. Xiaomi is also not that bad but the insane amount of noise is unfortunately hurting its chance of getting praise. Is it better than Huawei though? Definitely, so it will get at least 2 points here as Samsung is just oh my god. I feel that I have no other choice than to give it the same amount of points as Huawei as both of them are the least usable of them all. As for the front camera, we actually got some pretty good results, not really what I was expecting when it was completely dark outside. Even though I think the photo from the P60 Pro looks really cool, you do see that it is kind of artificial. The 13 Ultra surprised me as I usually don't like their front camera and the S23 Ultra has better details on the face but loses out due to being darker than the others as the 14 Pro will get 2 points with less accurate focus. In this one, the Galaxy has reclaimed the throne and the iPhone also looks nice if only it wasn't so warm. Huawei is tied with the iPhone as Xiaomi is starting to fall behind. If you wanted to shoot some TikToks at night though, the only phone that is a master of consistency at videography is unfortunately for Android, the iPhone. No idea how Xiaomi was better than the others here in controlling the noise but it's definitely a point of praise as this is proof of how much they've developed their camera software. Samsung and Huawei's front camera videos aren't good enough at night so they'll only get 1 point each. So, while Apple is still overall the best at night, if you're only shooting with the wide camera, I actually prefer Huawei. Xiaomi could also be up there in the future if they manage to control the annoying levels of noise, but for now, they'll have to take a step back, which brings us to the last category, which is zoom, as well as zooming into the moon. Starting off with optical zoom, a detail is that the galaxy blew out the shining letters of the train station. Five times is equally problematic as Huawei is looking pretty good if only the white balance wasn't so cool as in opposite of warm. Ten times is looking really good on Xiaomi's side as their flagship performed really well in our general zoom comparisons as well. Twenty times as well as thirty times shows us how Chinese companies are overtaking the competition even in terms of software, just look at the amazing quality of Huawei. Amazing software stuff going on here, as 100 times will go the way of the Galaxy and the P60 Pro. Now, even though Samsung is still king during daytime in my eyes, at night I have to say that Huawei definitely outperformed the rest. Can they carry this performance to the moon? All aboard the spaceship for the first mobile phone moon landing. At 10 times, it seems we have a clear winner already, but do we really? Let's not speak too soon just yet as this is just the super moon technology of the Xiaomi 13 Ultra. Here's an example of how it's used and you can see that it starts at 5 times and gives you a much clearer view of the moon. At 30 times, the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra also jumps in the battle not wanting to be left behind. Still though, the photo from Xiaomi looks slightly crisper and cleaner with Huawei also not doing too bad and some might say that it's honorable of them not to use specialized software if you know what I mean. At 50 times, the same traits can be seen between the two that are going head to head and 100 times is no different with Xiaomi having a slight advantage over Samsung overall 
Which reminds me, what do you guys think about these photos? As I mentioned in a previous video, I got quite a bit of hate for calling Samsung out on their tricks about a year ago. In fact, we made that video before any major YouTuber even mentioned this topic. Ooh, wow. Do you think that this software should be allowed or are the companies taking it a little bit too far? Tell us your thoughts and it would be cool if you could also subscribe to the channel and also like this video to push it against the algorithm. We hope you enjoyed this comparison just as much as our other videos and we look forward to seeing you again.